Car Sales Talk 101, where it's all about life in the car business. Telling you like it is. Here's the man with the plan, Terry Cameron. Let's get started. Welcome back to Car Sales Talk 101. I'm Terry Cameron. Thanks for hanging out with me again this week. Let me tell you, this past week has been a crazy week. It's been an awesome week. You know, I had a birthday, and more importantly, I had the best present, best birthday present anybody could ever want. I had, I was given my first grandchild. So I want everybody to welcome Maddie Lee to the Cameron family. Really, really special. I never really thought that uh, I was going to be a good grandpa, but you know, I like that name. I remember back in the day when I first got married, I wasn't too sure about kids. I always thought that if I had kids, I wanted them to come born 18 years old and come with luggage. Well, that changed years ago, of course, when my first child was born, but it's even more special now that I have a granddaughter and I'm so proud. But enough of that stuff. Let's go ahead and get on with the podcast. The episode, This episode uh, is about something that I've witnessed just a few times over the past couple of weeks at my own dealership. And if it's handled right, it usually works out to the salesperson, the dealership, the sales manager's benefit, if we handle it right. And what I'm talking about is the customer that wants to see the invoice. I want you to think about that. How many times does that happen to you? I mean, it doesn't really happen too much on a pre-owned car, of course, but on a new car, when the customer says, hey, I want to see your invoice. Before I go too much further, I want you to think about that. Ponder that customer's question. I want to see the invoice. What do you do? What do you say? So I ran this through uh, my salespeople in, in one of our sales meetings, and it seems like everybody wanted to come up with this fancy, smancy answer. You know, we wanted it to sound so cool and like we were in control. And honestly, it sounded like we really didn't know what the hell we were talking about. There's really not a whole lot that you need to, to um, think about here. The customer asked to see the invoice. What comes to your mind? If you were the salesperson, if you're the sales manager, what comes to your mind? What should your response be? Well, let me tell you what my response would be and what my response is. First of all, it's no problem. But let me ask you this, Mr. and Mrs. Customer. Why? Why do you want to see the invoice? And then shut your trap. Let them explain to you why they want to see the invoice. So, again, I want you to think about this. What do you think their answer is to that question when you ask them why they want to see the invoice? So, when I've asked my salespeople this, this question, they said, well, it's because they want to make sure you're not making too much money on them. Or they want to make sure that they're getting a good deal. Or they just want to make sure they're not getting ripped off. Hopefully, that last, the ripped off part, isn't what comes to mind with your customers. Because if it does, that just means they don't trust you. And you're really swinging with a blindfold on right now. But ask them, why? So, let's, let's think about what kind of answers can we get from that when they say why? Sometimes you just can't get a good answer. And that's just something they were taught to ask. They don't have a good answer to this. Now, if you're like me and you've been in the business for an awful long time, sometimes I like to think too long, but a long time, the, the margins, profit margins have shrunk tremendously. There's just not the markup that we used to have in cars, especially in imports. There's just not a whole lot. Now, there's a little bit more when you start talking about F-150s or, or F-250s or three-quarter ton trucks and some luxury vehicles when, you know, the more, you know, those 50, 60, 70, 80,000 uh, dollar cars, yeah, they have a little bit more markup in, but today in those 10, or I'm sorry, those 20, 30, 40,000 dollar cars, there's really not a whole lot of markup in those. Now, most manufacturers, it, it's not all about gross. Most dealerships, it's really not all about gross anymore. It's about moving units, moving the metal, because all that metal is doing sitting on the lot is just metal. Until we actually sell it, does it turn into dollar bills? So the the goal here, at least where I work at, and I'm sure it's like this at most new car dealerships, is volume. You need to sell a, a, a certain amount of cars. That your manufacturer is asking you to sell a certain amount of cars. They may even break it down into models. Certain models are worth so much money. Well, that's where the money comes. You have to sell a whole lot of cars. 
And God forbid if you sell all a lot of cars and you give up a lot of gross to the point to where you're losing money selling some of these cars with the hope of making that gross, God forbid if you don't hit that number. It's probably going to cost somebody their job. So you got to play this smart. Customer again, let's get back to customer ask. I want, I want to see your invoice. Your response should be, Hey, no problem. I'm going to ask you this. Why do you want to see the invoice? First uh, thing that comes to my mind is they want to say, well, I just want to make sure you're not making so much money. Well, what I want you to say, and if you can't say this, this is a perfect time for a TO. You, you're going to ask the customer, let me ask you this. If I show you the invoice on this $30,000 vehicle, what return on our investment do you think we should get? What type of profit do you think we should get? I mean, if you bought this car for $30,000 and two weeks later you wanted to sell it, would you sell it less than $30,000 or more than $30,000? And as long as you've got a customer that's thinking right and it's not a total smart ass, they're going to tell you more than $30,000. And you're going to say, exactly, well, what do you think is a good profit, a fair profit, a good, fair return on our investment of $30,000 if you were the one purchasing a car and selling it? I'm going to tell you, I don't know exactly the answer they're going to tell you, but almost every single time they tell me that, or I ask them that question, the number they tell me is usually more money than I'm making. And let me tell you, it makes it so much fun when you can say, okay, no problem. That just means I either have to raise my price a little bit more or give you less money for your trade. And what happens normally at that time, they usually usually settle for the number that we were talking about. So you will get that customer sometimes that says, I don't want you to make any profit. Well, I don't want you to spend a whole lot of time with people like that. You know, common sense is not so common anymore. So let's not spend a whole lot of time on those people. But here's what I would do with the customer that says, I don't want you to make any profit. Again, you may have to get a TO here because it's kind of goes something like this. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, that's too bad because we have to make a profit. That's how we stay in business. That's how we take care of our customers. That's how we service our customers. And that's how we take care of our employees. Without a profit, we're gone. Now, whether that means too much to you or not, I'm sorry, but that's exactly what we have to do. We have to make a profit. So ask them that question. Sometimes they'll tell you, well, you're going to make it up on my trade. Hopefully, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, we we will. But, you know, we get more and more customers just like you that are not willing to pay the price that we are asking for. Besides, we put all our pre-owned prices online to be able to compete with all those larger dealerships. And so when people come in here, they come in based upon the price that we put on the on online, on the Internet, on the interweb, whatever you want to call it. And they show up for that reason. Now, if it's too high, you know, speaking of that, if it's too high for either new or pre-owned, they're not even going to call us. They're going to go to the next closest dealership who has a lower price. So, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, I'd like to think that that would happen, that we would make it up on your trade, but it normally doesn't happen. So, again, I want to put this back in your court. If you purchase this car for $30,000 to make a profit and you were going to sell it two, three, four weeks down the road, how much money would you settle? What profit would you settle for? And again, all you have to do then is turn it around, show them the invoice. This is what we paid for it. This is what we're asking. This is the amount of money that we're making. Don't you think that's fair? Even if they don't say no, you'll probably get an offer from them because you're going to ask them, if you don't think it's fair, what do you think is fair? Who cares what the answer is there? So what you're telling me, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, if I can sell this car for this price, is there anything else keeping us from wrapping this up right now? Pretty darn simple. Don't be afraid when they ask for the invoice. Just find out why they want it and then ask them what they think is a fair profit. Most people, are they understand. You know, they, they understand you have to make a profit. So don't be afraid to ask that. Give it a shot. Let me know if it doesn't work. And again, before I go, I want to thank everybody for listening to me again and welcome Maddie Lee to the Cameron family. Remember, the sky's the limit. I'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. Please rate it and write a review on Apple Podcasts. We appreciate your valuable feedback. You can email Terry at 10 Minute Sales Talk at hot.rr.com. And don't forget to share the show with a friend.